yesterday Mad Maggie came out and was one of the most interesting and I think unique releases we've seen for a character in Apex Legends in a long time. Why? Because no one was quite sure whether she would be a dud, average, or OP heading in to this next season. But I feel like we've got some information. And I also feel like we've learned some valuable tips, not just from my experience, but from pros playing Maggie that will help you to improve. So today, I thought I'd put together some compilations and some clips that stood out for me of pros playing Mad Maggie, both aggressively, uh, maybe reactively, and also with a little bit of extra spice to help teach you ways to improve in order to get your Mad Maggie on. This is five tips pros abuse with Mad Maggie most players never use. The first rule is that Mad Maggie is an aggressive legend, but what type of aggression? Because it varies very differently from Bangalore, Pathfinder, or Wraith. And in fact, we can even learn that from the best of the best on Bangalore Shiv FPS as he tried to play some Mad Maggie yesterday. Let's see how that went. Um, um hopefully. Okay. You can, I'm yeah, queue off. Yeah, yeah, you can cue the fucking uh, head and I go off. I'm up here, probably. I'm queuing it. I'm up here, but I'm not gonna be uh, I'm, I'm not in them. I'm not in them. I'm gonna need help, boys. You need to go, 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 go. Here, here. Come on. He's almost tracked. He's, He's one. Oh, no. Dead. I'm rezzing. Nice. That shit is awkward. I already used to this character. It's fucking awkward. Obviously, Maggie's a little awkward, and unlike Smokes, that riot drill has to be placed perfectly in between you and object and where the opponent is standing, which means you have to be a little bit more tactical, and you can't just throw that cue when things start to get rough in a fight. You have to constantly think about, how will I get the most damage out of this? We'll take a look at how Hal does this later on, as he's a little bit more of a conservative Maggie, but it ends up working really well late game. But to show you Shiv was having a hard time getting over what it's like playing Bangalore, <laughs> let's just watch this clip. Okay, I cracked fast. The guy's in Bangalore. Bangalore. Bag is inside, two inside the building. I'm gonna burn that door, okay? Do it. Okay, I'm burning the door, burning him purple. It's like a smoke. <laughs> I got up. On day. So clearly Shiv is still getting over the fact that there are no Bangalore smokes in Maggie's kit. But I'm figuring that he's going to get used to this one pretty well. In fact, later on in this video, he actually shows us why Maggie is so good at breaking deadlocks between fights, giving your team an advantage when there is no advantage between either side. And he does this really well in the chaos of a fight where both of his teammates are down and one of his teammates needs to clutch up. Back to me, it's okay, okay. You should have shield. We'll heal Back up. To get him, get him, Zip. Is there, please stop using that bow, please. <laughs> the 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 He's the using the bow. They fucking bag yelled it. Yeah, yeah, do TP, do TP. I did it, I did it. You need to get shield here. Yeah. You can do this, maybe. Zip, you need to look. Zip, you need to look for him. Poke them, poke them, Zip. Nice. He got it with the bow still. One band this corner. I really hope no one sees us. You know, I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show ball towards him. Is it a diff? So you can yeah, push him. Do it, do it. One second, it's in front of the rock though. Hold it on this side. Yeah, I queued on the wall. I'm burning in flesh. I'm pushing with ult. He has to be away. Has to be away. In the open there. Nice. Holy fuck. We're fucking farming. <laughs> that <ball> <laughs> That fucking ball. <laughs> what the I had fuck to is... look my other weapon. They were both one shot. Uh, I was like, ah! But <laughs> Zip is just using a fucking bow this entire game. It's giving me a fucking heart attack. <laughs> So first we talked about that she has a different type of aggression, one that maybe layers on over time and becomes heavier and heavier. Secondly, we talk about how she breaks stalemates and how pros use her to get the extra edge in a neutral fight. This is a great opportunity to showcase that, as well as the next clip I'm going to play for you, as Shiv is obviously down behind the rock, but he takes a great opportunity to help with the riot drill while healing up in his med kit to be able to burn through the wall where they're holding the door for his teammate to push through and get the advantage. Not only that, he throws his ultimate, which we're not talking about yet. We have a lot of clips coming up for that that allows him to turn that defensive moment into an offensive moment, using the speed boost from the ultimate to then get back into the fight quickly and help finish off the engagement. Here's another example of how Maggie takes a neutral trade and turns it into her favor. Push it, this guy, did you hit him? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. I'm burning him. I'm pushing up. They got my left. 
Wait on me. Wait, uh, wait, crack, wait, crack for you. No, wait, dead. Mouth one. All dead, all dead. Nice. Did you catch that? They both traded each other, Shiv and the Bloodhound, and it was basically two deciding to go back undercover and heal up or wait for teammates. But before Shiv did so, he shot the riot drill towards the Bloodhound, and that's where it started to tilt in his favor. You can no longer use cover the way that you would, peeking and poking, and then ready to peek back out once you've healed again. The riot drill forces you to move, and oftentimes that's the difference to allow a player to either get a heal off uninterrupted, then chase you down, or allow your teammates to finish off the fight. Great stuff from Shiv and a wonderful showcase of what Maggie can do in those instances. Now the next three things pros abuse about Maggie most players don't use is understanding what the ult can do because it's used for two different things. One, the ult looks like it's simply used for offense, but it's incredibly good for defense. And secondly, yes, it can be used for offense, but you have to understand when is the time to pull it out in the middle of a fight and not just use it to run away and delay or assist your teammates. This is probably the biggest decision maker factor that is going to determine whether you become a great Mad Maggie player or not. And we have Fade, one of the best movement players who showcased two beautiful uses of this, both offensively to finish off a fight and defensively when running away and how you can make your Mad Maggie plays better. Great movement up top. Huge zip line. Again, poor riot drill. Ah. Uh. It's just so good. Being able to hide behind cover, peek out, and then throw your ultimate to get that easy knockback to buy you that extra bit of time to run over maybe one of the speed boosters or just go ahead and finish off an opponent who's now stunned and knocked back and a little disoriented from where you are. That is the perfect example of how in a 1v1 to use your ult for offense, but it can be used for so many different things too, as well as the speed boosts, which we haven't talked about yet. They can give you a very special advantage that pros are going to use, most players probably will not. And we'll see that here in the next couple of clips. Oh my God, he's literally just, he's not even shooting. <laughs> mm. Wow, and he didn't even shoot there. I mean, the man is a movement god, but one thing to notice is pros are still getting used to the fact that Riot Drills need something in between. You have got to make sure you have meat in your sandwich and that the enemy is the bread on the other side and you're the bread on this side. Make sure there's always something in the middle because you'll see a lot of pros still try to fire it directly at a player or end up hitting the ground. Use those boxes, use those lines of sight, and take half a second, even though it's still day one, to make sure that Riot Drill really buys you time and blocks off space as Maggie is so good at doing and one of the tenets of really being a great Maggie player. So we talked about the ult for offense, but what about the ult for defense? Another tenet pros really get a grasp on is that corridors are your best friend. And Mad Maggie, using her ultimate defensively in tight spaces, allows you to deter opponents from chasing you in a really effective way, forcing them to either back off or take some serious damage and inflict a ton of stuns that would force them to take a bad fight when they finally got to you. Let's watch. Great use of the riot drill. It's already getting the damage, but they're pushing through it. But they're already taking a lot of damage just doing that. No cracks yet. There's a crack. 
Oh, look at the ultimate. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Another crack. Just chasing him. They take all that damage. That is a thirsty team right there. That would deter most professional teams. Ooh, that guy had some shots on him. Oh my god. Wow, this Octane really tried. He really, really tried. Great movement. Now just keeps the advantage on the high ground. Not dropping till he needs to. Oh, maravilloso! Oh my god, what a perfect riot drill. That's how you use it. There's only four seconds left. He's going to have another burn. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, my God. So, as you could tell, patience, allowing you to put that little bit of meat between your bread. <laughs> so, as you can tell, the sandwich metaphor works really well. Whenever there's something in between you and the enemy player, use that riot drill, and it ends up being a dramatic effect in your favor. But also, really noting how well that ultimate delayed and forced them to separate as a squad. The second there were multiple cracks, the second that they had multiple stuns with the ultimate going through the riot drill, they were forced to kind of separate their fight. One took the zip line, one took it a little later, it isolated 1v1s, and imagine if you have a team of three where Fade is just playing by himself. A great use of how Maggie can take her offensive capabilities, but use them defensively to set up a difficult situation for enemies to push. Another important rule that pro players abuse, most players never use, and this goes with all the legends that you play, is when you see fun abilities, you try to let your abilities set up for your play. Unfortunately, in Apex Legends, it's the exact opposite. Abilities are supposed to assist you, not make the moment. Now, abilities have a huge impact in the game, especially at high level, and can change dynamics, but most pros realize that it has to be your gun skill, your positioning, and your tactics that end up setting setting up for your abilities to really shine. Fade shows us this in a final in-game circle where patience and his gunplay and changing of heights allows Mad Maggie's abilities not necessarily to take over, to, but to be effective again and again and again. Stop peeking me. <laughs> Please, give me the Kraber. What's he shooting at? He got the Kraber. Oh my god. I will one shot you. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Called it. Wow. This is a good Q situation right here. And this is where we, we, you, you set it up with the shot, but then the Q keeps Wait, the pressure on. And that, like that gets oh the re-knock. 80 damage. And 80 damage. But that Q by itself is nothing without the knock. You know, I probably, a lot of us probably hit that ball up there, go throw, uh, go throw our ult and start charging in there. Ooh, nice. But it's good patience to fade. Another Maggie. Not anymore. Oh, last squad. Stop. There's the ult. Ult actually does, I think, about 20 damage. It's not very much. It's really the concussiveness that, that really makes it. And then, of course, the pads. The 1v1, I think. Like we saw earlier with Shiv. Helping teammates out, helping yourself out. It's a nice utility in a final fight, especially when you're getting aggressive. Oh, shit. Ooh, he's on 15 kills right here. This is a big, this is a big game. 
make sure you're following and checking out all these guys as well because they're just giving us so much great information on the value of these legends and how to really take your game up to the next level with them. Ooh, nice jump. Ooh, that was the ult right there. She threw it. I gotta be careful. Oh no! <laughs> I'm not trying to throw right now. Oh my no god! No shot. He's lucky the lifeline is the is the one alive and not the Maggie chasing because riot drill right there or even below from up top to below that would be dangerous. Woo! Vault. That's dangerous. Oh, that's bad. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. No way he loses this. They just keep reviving each other up there. Pick it! Pick it! <gasps> Pick it! Oh, good. Oh, oh. my God! Oh, my We're God. We're in the lake! What an hold. You can see how valuable what? that is defensively. That Mad Maggie has ulted him like three times. He hasn't ulted her once, though, and that's, again, just a great awareness of sometimes it's really not about the ult opening things for you or opportunities for you, especially on a character that can seem super aggressive. Oh my God. How long is this going to take? <laughs> I suck. He had Thank another, oh God. my God. <laughs> Oh my, oh my god. god. What a moment. Dude, I don't know. I don't even know how that came close. A great demonstration there of how you need to play Apex Legends even though you're with Maggie. You cannot let like a Wraith your abilities necessarily determine getting in and out of fights and also the way that you're able to play with a Pathfinder. It's not about setting yourself up with your abilities. It's really about using your natural skill to improve and then letting those abilities shine by putting players into bad positions and then capitalizing them. That's where her aggressiveness starts to become really valuable. Now our final video which is from our most famous pro in Apex Legends, TS SM, FTX, Imperial Howl showcases two small things I want to note. One, yes, that ult is great for defense, but the way that you have to play around it, Howl shows us very, very well, especially with a team of three. The key is on the other side, don't do anything at all. There isn't a way to really push after getting ulted with Maggie, and Hal knows this, and his patience and experience at the highest level helps him to brush this one off. They're gonna probably hit me. Or maybe one's still second floor. It's two guys. Oh no. I'll change crack. Oh. And I'm like 30 flash and keep thing up there. I think it's still a little quick. Let's go now. Fuck. Behind him. Fuck. Give me one. Give me one. There was a guy who came behind us. First floor. I'm looking. I'm looking. That clip shows us that all you need to do when Maggie ults you, especially if you're in a better position, is just hold your ground. Trying to do too much after that is like trying to fight once you're stunned and getting damage taken on you from a Gibraltar ultimate. It's just not a good idea. However, Maggie also shows a weakness there in the fact that Trying to open up with just your ult doesn't really give you the opening you might want, which leads us to our very 
final point. Our final rule that pros abuse most players don't use, which is that because of Mad Maggie's speed and the excitement of the way the ult looks and the bounce, people don't understand that your real opener, your real bread and butter, is going to be the riot drill, especially in late game. Hal showcases that your ultimate may or may not even be needed as long as you understand positioning and how to poke and prod and keep pressure on with that tactical. That's Apparently Nick is in LA. Let's make sure these guys get third. They're getting charged up right now. He's cracked. He's, he's, he's less than 58 flash. What is it? Oh my god, I thought that was yours. Oh my god, mate. <laughs> I'm gonna get above them, alright? And I'm gonna play up here with the Ashtipi. Alright. Yeah, do it. Yeah, right here, right here. Right here, sweet. Right there. Wow. He's almost cracked. Cracked, 40 flesh. Damn, let's go. Sweet dreams, the power plays. <laughs> oh, I love that Just hold me, just make sure they can't climb on me. I have stuff I hit 70 on the right. I'm shitting on them with my Q. They're give you ulting you. <laughs> oh my god. They're ulting and nading you. And probably Maggie queuing you right now. I'm getting blocked. Yeah, you're dead. This guy's hit for 100 here. I have 20 bullets now. You guys want to do it, you're fine. Nice shots. Wait, that's a fucking. Oh, that's nice. I cracked. Bro, I'm farming this motherfucker right here. How much oh, light ammo do you have? Light ammo, light I have ammo, 20 set, ammo, I have 35. Ammo. I have 35 oh, bullets. I have 146 for two. <laughs> Jeez, we lost. <laughs> You're fine, the game ends to where you guys want to heal it like it. Hold your rope. Oh my god, that shit does so much damage. Wait, does it actually do a lot of damage? If some, if you're like yeah. hitting them like right here, what I'm, I'm doing? Uh, I'm not gonna use Wait, this guy's in gas. I shouldn't. Uh... Oh, sure now I'm they've got a much easier fight. Ultimate, Ultimate, Ultimate comes out. Oh, oh, I'm I'm out there. There's no reason to. If you want to get the one, you can. And it does 12 damage down below. You guys saw that 12. I'm getting different angles. Look at that through the tree as well. Call me in, John. Call me in. Grab my banner. Not 100 damage. I can call him in. I'm literally calling him in. That's actually insane. This is actually insane. Plays. Insane plays. Shoot the, what the? Shoot the dog. The dream team. Get burned. Dog. Where? Five rules get burned next. Underneath you. Look, underneath. I'm pinging you fucking blind hole. Is this live? Yeah. Alright, that's cool, you motherfucker. God. I killed the. Keep I it PG, him. guys. Breathe, breathe. You're rushing me and shit. You're good, you're good. Very interested to note if that just goes through shields or not. It very well may go through shields. I'm crying right now. Wraith one. Give me one. I'm dropping on them because fucking oath. Dead. Yeah, let's go. Woo! Easy clap. They have a little conversation about it at the very end as well. Hit like somebody for 50 in like two seconds. It's like a fucking broken fuse cue. But you can hit him through the walls. Nice. Oh, shit. How much damage do you think you got just from killing them? Uh, if, I don't know. Like maybe like 500. If, well, at the end, like 500 probably. Something like that. I don't know. 500 extra damage, but all the pressure in the world. The ultimate didn't even work. It hit 12 damage and that was it. But they were still able to dominate that late game with a riot drill, which is why you have to understand the value of what your abilities have. The riot drill is your number one weapon, and you'll see everything else follow up as a support tool or as a way to distract and get an even bigger opening when you push off of that speed boost and the knockback from her ult. That's the way you got to play Maggie. That's what these pros are showing us, and that's why this video should hopefully help you understand five rules pros abuse most players never use so you can put them in your kit when you play Mad Maggie in Season 12. Thanks for watching, guys. Remember to leave a like and help join us on the road to 400,000 and comment any other Maggie tips you have in the video below or anything you think I might have missed. As always, never give up, never stop gaming. I'll see you next time.